Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode 11 in my Patreon exclusive series on sculpting a half life size figure. What you are watching right here on YouTube is an excerpt from the full 40 minute long video, which you can find by visiting my Patreon page, and there's a link for that in the description below. So, where do I add clay? I add clay in two places. In between the borders of each shape and the contours from my four views. This is volumetric considerations. And I add clay in between the forms in the areas of transition, the area between two forms. And this is transitional considerations. I tend to bounce back and forth a bit between the two, but you can separate the two if you'd like, and if it helps you focus on one at a time and if it makes life easier for you doing it that way, by all means. Most importantly, don't mess up one while working hard on the other. To begin with here, let's talk about transitional considerations. Transitions are the areas between two forms the area where they meet, essentially. Often enough, this area is in shadow compared to the form itself, as the form is a volume and catches light. And if the form is a volume and catches light, then it's going to create a shadow as well. Transitions will only have a chance of being successful if you've done a good job setting up the forms and shapes to begin with. Some of the pitfalls, which we have spoken about before, is placing forms too close to each other so there's no room for any transitions. You'll see many places that my forms are placed a little bit further apart than you would perhaps think. This gives me a broad transition, which reads better visually than a thin and narrow one. In general, broad forms read better than thin and weak ones, and the same thing goes for transitions. Narrow transitions will look sharp, which is problematic considering the skin of the human body is quite soft. No matter how low your body fat percentage is, there is still need for soft transitions when dealing with the human body. Transitions are one of those areas where people struggle a ton. It's a mix of things that make people struggle with this aspect of sculpture. One being that they are potentially too selfish. They are too pleased with themselves and the information that they've found to lose it. I certainly find myself in this camp from time to time and it's something that I have to contend with on every sculpture that I make. Loose more than you think you need to. Soften things more than you think you need to. The amount of clay needed to completely lose the information you found is staggering. You can almost always afford to add more clay and make the transition softer than you think. The other reason people struggle is a little harder to solve. It has to do with the placement of the high points of forms. If the high points of forms are poorly placed in three-dimensional space, it becomes hard to create soft transitions, as the high points might sit too close to where the transition needs to happen. You want to vary where the high point of the forms sit on your forms. You don't want to make all the high points sit smack dab in the middle of the form. You'll get a kind of bloated looking Michelin man sculpture this way. A Baccio Bandinelli, if you will. You want some high points closer to one edge or the other, and you want to make sure that there's variety. 
but be very careful and make sure the high points are well placed so that the opportunity is there later in the process to create soft transitions. Creating the transition itself is hardly any work at all if all these things are done well before even attempting to create it. But if one of them, one of these things are done poorly, not done well, then it can be a bit of a pain. Let's thank today's sponsors, my Patreon supporters on Patreon, who have ensured the continued existence of this channel and allowed me to upgrade my gear bit by bit, making better looking and better sounding content for all of you watching. If you are interested in supporting the channel, or perhaps interested in getting personal feedback on your sculptures from me, or watching more in-depth tutorials on sculpture, then Patreon is the place for you. You can get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Anything sculpture related goes, we can talk about armatures, supplies, mold making, anything you might need help with in your sculpting endeavors. If you prefer to learn visually, there's also my Patreon exclusive videos on there. The Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture, which will provide you with all the information you need in order to sculpt a half-life size standing female figure. It's a deep dive into all the concepts I use to construct every sculpture that I make. So check it out, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description below. For the most part, on this sculpture, I had done a decent job and there were only a few spots that needed some adjusting. It's hard to know if it's going to work as planned before attempting to create the transitions themselves, at least if you've never done it before, but with more practice you get an idea of what works and what doesn't. Transitions are tricky and do require some trial and error in order to master. Take the tips that I've given you here and make sure to apply them. It won't be perfect the first time around, but it will help you avoid a lot of frustrations. Volume is the other consideration being made at this point. This one has the potential to mess things up quite a bit, so I have to be very careful while making my volumetric considerations. Without volume, my sculpture will be flat, which I don't want, so I do need volume. But how do I add it? I add clay and increase the volume of my forms in the areas between my contours and the borders of my forms. This is a very small area of course, depending on the size and the shape of the form itself that you're working on. A few millimeters of clay in between the borders of my forms and the contours will take the look of my sculpture pretty far. It will increase the value range on my figure and bring it out into the light and by bringing it out into the light create shadow as well. There are dangers, however, associated with adding volume that we should be aware of. When we add volume to our forms, we must not make the forms larger. We have to respect the shape design that we made earlier on in the process. Now, I believe in being conscious while working, so any change that's made should be a choice, not a random act. If we choose to change the shape design, that's one thing, that's okay. That's a valid approach and something that might need to or you might want to have happen in some areas. But as a general rule of thumb, I like to limit what I focus on to make life easier for myself. Keep your world small and, and all that. So, by focusing on one aspect of sculpture while attempting not to mess up all the other aspects, especially the ones I've already done, of course, that seems to make sense to me.
We already worried about the shape design. We already worried about the contours. And we believe both of these to be solved in a convincing fashion at this stage. So let's not ruin or change those in the pursuit of volumes. A problem many people run into is that the borders of the forms grow as they add volume. The edges of the forms get pushed closer and closer together because the addition of clay is haphazard and not carefully placed between the borders of the form and the contour. When the forms grow to meet each other, we put ourselves in a bad place for creating transitions because the space in between the forms that should be occupied by the transition is now no longer there. Our shape design is compromised at this point, of course, as the shapes we designed have been altered by accident. When we go to create transitions, we end up in one of two places. We might end up having transitions that are way too sharp, because in order to make a soft to broad transition, you need a broad area to create the transition in. A narrow transition, a narrow shadow, will always read as sharp. Sharp transitions have for the most part no place on the human body, with some exceptions of course. But these are exceptions we want to carefully control. The other thing that might happen is that we fill the transition up and now we end up with soft transitions, but the figure looks flat and bloated because the nature of the transition is not the same as if we had made sure that it occupied its own space. The other effect this issue has is that our topography will suffer and flatten out or disappear altogether. So now we will, for example, have a torso, which is a semi-circular shape with some surface bumps. This is not a very interesting look for sculpture. And while we might find some light and dark, it will be superficial and flat looking and lacking in topography, which is vital for a successful sculpture. Adding volume irresponsibly can also have implications on your contour. The contour has already been carefully considered and dealt with, more or less. In many ways, it's my sculpture's borders, which I'd like to work within. That's kind of why I set them up in the beginning. And if they are to expand or contract, this needs to be a conscious effort, not a random act. The effects of not paying attention here is obvious, I think. You might end up with a bloated looking belly that's pushed out further than what you would like. You could end up expanding the width of the hips, or any other width from that matter, from any other four views. Creating a sculpture that has poor proportions compared to your model. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did and want to learn sculpture from me or just support the channel, check out my Patreon page. Next time we work on this piece, we will sculpt a portrait, which is the last piece of the puzzle. And essentially, the finishing of our sculpture will happen then. So, stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching. Stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.